Hello, everyone, and welcome back. We are here live uh, with our client, Tanya, and uh, her PTSD service dog, Kylo. And so I am going to um, invite all of you to, if you're watching on Zoom, um, you can click the Q&A button to ask questions. Or if you're watching us on Facebook Live, you can type your questions in the comments section. Um, and we're happy to kind of answer whatever questions you have about this team. But I always like to start these interviews by asking our guest, how is it that you came to be part of the PADS family? So um, what brought you to PADS? How did you find out about us um, and led you uh, to be matched with this beautiful boy? Um, it was a strange process. I didn't know PADS had dogs for PTSD. Um, I was searching elsewhere and um, the wait lists are years and years long. Uh, I had PTSD for well over a year and uh, just wasn't getting better. So I, I've always been a dog person. I, I have another dog who will jump in the screen on occasion. Um, and, and I knew that if there's one thing that will help me get back into life was to have a dog. And I've seen a lot of pads dogs around with wheelchairs and that. And so I've just been searching online and I can't remember if it popped up in my Facebook feed or popped up somewhere that pads is now having PTSD dogs. It made my day. I applied instantly. And then I thought, this is the funny thing. I thought the wait lists are going to be years long still. So I applied to puppy race. So I went and to one of the meetings, like the pre meetings to become a puppy raiser. And I essentially, I felt bad for them. I am like panicking the whole time and crying and freaking out because of the PTSD. And they took me aside later and I'm like, I know it's gonna be a long time to get a dog. Maybe I can puppy raise one in the meantime. And they are very sweet and said, no, no, you'll, you'll get far too attached. <laughs> and uh, and that, that's how I got into it. But they, the application process went, went fairly well. <laughs> And that's when I met the past people and I, when I first went to that meeting, I thought, oh my God, what a lovely bunch of people. <laughs> yeah, I think that was probably uh, Doug and Susan usually do those info sessions when we were doing them in person and they're delightful. So, um, well, that's, that is definitely fun. And, and yeah, it's interesting. I love that um, your first thought to get involved was to help. And uh, that's very, very cool. So for those of you that have just tuned in um, and are joining us um, on Facebook, I see our numbers going up on both on Facebook and on, on Zoom here, um, people joining in. If you've just joined us, we're here with Tanya and um, service dog Kylo. And uh, did you hear your name, buddy? Anyway, so... If you have a question uh, that we can answer in today's broadcast, you can type it into the comment section on Facebook, or you can type it into the Q&A box on uh, Zoom. So um, I apologize if I'm fumbling all over with my words today. Oh, and of course, now my phone is ringing. Um, so tell me a little bit about um, this guy and how he helps you and kind of what role he plays in your life now? Um, this guy was made for me. <laughs> we have a special kind of weird bond, uh, I will admit to, and, and I'm sure Margaret <laughs> will admit to that as well. Um, the thing I remember the most about Kylo is when I went in, I passed all the interviews and, and testing, I went in to meet all these dogs at the kennels and they're all lovely, but none of them, see, I didn't really connect with them other than they're adorable and I love them. And I, I Margaret was saying, she goes, well, there's a dog that's not here. Um, if you're not feeling well, he wants to crawl into your skin. I'm like, I want that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so she brought him to my house days later and a few other dogs. And as soon as I met him, we just connected. Like he, we invited him to jump up on my bed. He jumped up in the bed and he just melted into me. And I'm like, oh, this is everything I need. So. Before I had Kylo, I would have severe panic attacks and anxiety daily. I wouldn't go anywhere. <laughs> or if I did go, I would like, I was the strange person like crying <laughs> and hyperventilating uh, in, in stores and, and anywhere I had to go. And Kylo is, I, I don't know how you guys train them this way, but he is so intuitive. 
I, since I've had them, I haven't had one full panic attack. Like he interrupts them so fast. Like he either bumps at me or if I'm sitting, he's right on top of me. And he, he knows it before I do. I, I don't like initially it was hard because I kept going, why are you bugging me? Like, why are you on top of me? Until I learned it, like turn it into myself and go, oh my gosh, how did you feel that before me? It's unreal. That's he amazing. also, yeah, it's me. He also, um, the first night he slept over with me, I, I would get really bad nightmares. And uh, I remember I was sleeping. He's, he's the best little spoon, <laughs> in case anyone's wondering. Uh, I'm lucky that he's allowed to sleep up on the bed and stuff. But the first night I had him, I was having a nightmare. And all of a sudden, I remember I don't fully wake up. And all of a sudden, I felt Kylo climbing across me. He just laid across me, did like the deep pressure therapy. His little face would sit right there, a few little licks, and he just sat there breathing on me. And it just took the nightmare away. We got back to sleep, and it's unreal. That's amazing. So Kylie is asking, how long have you guys been a team? We'll be, we'll be a team uh, on the 27th of February for a year. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, wow. I, I, this year in some ways has been the longest year ever, but in other ways it has also just flown by. It's just been such an odd, odd year, but you know, what good timing too. I mean, you think about the fact that kind of, we went into lockdown a few weeks later and you were in that team training class that was happening when COVID hit, correct? Yes. Yeah. So how was that? What was team training like? Um, it, we had to keep adjusting on a regular basis. Uh, we would, uh, we, you know, initially we'd have to be far apart from each other. We'd be at, luckily the weather was dry, so we could be out in the parking lot or out on the, the dead end street there and, and practice the training and, and then public access tests were, I already don't like going out in public and now you're adding a mask and and COVID to the situation. So it was, it was, it was a, a bit much, um, but you know, Margaret and Val uh, were there with us the whole way, helping with the training and they were so adaptable, like so fast, soon as anything came up or any sort of way that, they're so respectful in knowing that we're all so different and they would just ad adjust whatever we needed and, and how we needed it. and. Uh, even to the point where it's like, there's one day I wasn't going to get through training. <laughs> and uh, they just took one look at me and Kylo and they're like, and out, <laughs> you know, really good about it. Well, I think that's part of running a program like this is recognizing kind of what some of those limitations are and understanding that there's a finish line, but there's not a deadline in the same, in the same way. Right. So Slow and steady wins the race. So um, Diane's just asking, is Kylo always with you or do you leave him home sometimes? Kylo is always with me. The, there is a brief moment, maybe 20 minutes at the most, where we're not together, where I walk my other dog, who is 10. So she's old and doesn't want it. She only goes must go once a day for like uh, 10 minutes. So that's the only time I leave Kylo um, without me. Um, I don't do well without him. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're very much a team uh so uh 10 minutes once a day is the most i'm ever away from him and usually my daughter's home so he's quite happy to uh cuddle with my daughter while waiting for me to come back oh, that's awesome uh dana is sending love to you both and uh avril says he sounds amazing um Kylie says, welcome to the Pads family. Uh, so for those of you that are watching, you've just tuned in, feel free to post any questions you have in the comments and we will try and answer them for you. Um, and um, Kylo, uh, how old is he now? Is he three? I, he's five. Oh, he's five. So, um, so with him, you said that he's with you all the time. I know COVID year has been a little bit different, but what are some of the places like, um, do you, does he go to work with you or is he, does he go out to, um, you know, restaurant stores, that kind of thing? Um, or what does your world look like? Like how active is he with you? We, um, yeah, our training might be laughing a little bit right now. We, we don't go. Well, everybody. 
we're, I'm not capable of going back to work. So I'm being retrained right now. Yep. Um, so we're in school, but it's online school. So essentially he's gone to lay down a sunbeam. Sorry, everyone lost to zoom. But usually how it is, is I'm sitting here, he's laying across me while we're zoom schooling. So that's half our day, Monday to Friday is online school. Other than that, we really only go to the grocery store. We don't sort of go anywhere else. We kind of stick to ourselves or we, we do, um, we walk every day. We hike every day. So Kylo, I call him the Olympic athlete of Pat's dogs. He probably does a good 10 K every day. He's, he's pretty active. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, and it definitely is weird times for everybody, right? So, uh, yeah, um, sitting at home on Zoom calls seems to be uh, the norm for, for everyone. Uh, uh, Dana says, you two are an amazing team. So happy for both of you. Carol is asking, oops, I know there's more to it. Um, when you were training with Margaret, were there other clients and other dogs working in the same facility? What did your training look like? So when you did team training? Initially, I wasn't... Oh, come here, Kylo, come here. I couldn't train with other people initially. Um, so Margaret and Val came to me uh, a lot. And then I slowly came into team training when we could still train in person in the, the room there. But it, it took me a while to warm up to that. So they would all be at the table training and I would be sitting on the floor with Kylo um, across me. It's, it's taken me a long time to be able to get up and, uh, do things with people uh and then you know it's i kind of forgot the question but it, it was it was hard for me to get into training with other people there's two other people juliet usually came who is a, one of the loveliest people you'll ever meet and her dog stark and then two other brand new people with me who were uh training with their dogs who are, are both great people it's nothing against them i just don't do well with other people yet. Yeah. Well, and again, part of the journey, right? Of, of kind of that, you know, and sometimes, so often we get the question about, you know, what is it that PTSD dogs do? And that is one of the pieces that they do is help with that reintegration and um, kind of being that a little bit of that social icebreaker too, that it takes a little bit of that pressure off um, and it's certainly not PTSD, but I remember saying to somebody years ago, I was going on a trip and it was my first time probably in five years that I was traveling and it was just me and I had no dog because I'd been puppy raising for years. And I realized I was, so I have anxiety myself, but I realized how incredibly anxious I was about talking to people and initiating social conversations because I'd forgotten how. Um, because the dogs always do it for me. Um, so um, when you have a pad's dog, um, there is that, it takes that pressure off of you as a human to, to kind of come up with the first thing to say and, and things like that. So it's, you know, certainly not PTSD, but I do understand how uh, that is part of the support that they, the dogs provide is kind of acting as a little bit of that um, buffer if that makes sense. So that's nice that you had that option of just kind of sitting and engaging with him, but then kind of being in that group setting. I know that team training is certainly a time when um, often we bring clients together, so not always. And certainly during COVID year, we've done a lot of things remotely. We've had a lot of team trainings that have just been a lot over Zoom and then things one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so, uh, there's a whole bunch of comments flooding in. So just give me a second as I scroll through here. Um, so a couple people um, have asked just kind of um, background questions. Um, were you a vet or first responder um, in, in terms of like, you know, how it came to be that um, you needed a PTSD dog? Okay. Wanna share a little bit about that? Yeah, no problem. Um, I was a paramedic um, with BC Ambulance Service for a long time. <laughs> Um, most of my career was in the downtown east side of uh, Vancouver. So I, I was typical, I think, with a lot of first responders is we're unique individuals and um, we will push through things and think we're stronger than anyone else and, and not deal with 
a lot of stuff until it, it just builds up. And it, at one point, um, I just had the call. It, it was, it was a call that would probably break almost every paramedic who was out there. My partner who was on the call is, is off as well. Um, so it, it shattered who I was as a human being and I, I couldn't function. Um, it, I have a, not only do I have Kylo, but I have a team of people who helped put me back together. Um, so yeah, it's uh, any first responders, especially these days, I, I couldn't imagine. <laughs> Well, it is a very, very tough career um, at, you know, the best of times. Um, and certainly when something really traumatic happens, it takes it to a very different level. And um, kudos to you for doing the work in, in general. I think it's something, especially in this last year, um, I think all of us have developed a whole new appreciation for um, our healthcare workers, our first responders, all those folks that are out there kind of in the midst of COVID, but also have been there kind of all along. It's definitely a, a challenging um, career path that not, not everybody is kind of built for. And so I, I think that, you know, we get a lot of questions about why it is that we place dogs uh, strictly with first responders and veterans. And um, one of the reasons is just simply because of the, the magnitude of the need within that community. For those of you that are new to PADS and are just tuning in uh, for the first time or haven't heard this before, and one of the big reasons is kind of our initial funding to start the program um, came very specifically to help kind of meet some of the need kind of within the first responder and veteran communities. And so we're very grateful um, for the donors and the kind of support that has kind of come into PADS in order to get this program off the ground. We don't have a ton of dogs out there yet. I think probably, I wanna say maybe we're at half a dozen or so PTSD dogs that have kind of been placed. Um, and so it's a program that's growing, but we also have to kind of, you know, crawl before we can walk and um, walk before we can run. And so that's part of what we're doing right now is learning um, how to deliver the program well and how to support people as they go through it. So which kind of leads into our next question. Um, somebody was asking, what does the support from PADS look like um, after placement? So now that you've been matched with Kylo, what does the support look like for you from PADS? What does that relationship look like between uh, you and the organization or people within it? <laughs> um, for me, and well, I'm sure for everyone, um, PADS is avail available to me 24 <laughs> seven, honestly. Um, when I first got Kylo, he um, got sick for a little bit and, and I actually panicked and called. <laughs> I can't remember what o'clock I called. Um, but, you know, calmly responded, looked, took care of everything for me. Uh, so one, 24 seven, always available to help out. But also there's, um, I do regular public access tests with, with pads. Um, I also, uh, I took a few pads, people paddleboarding. I paddleboard a lot and Kylo is an mm -hmm. amazing paddleboarder. Uh, he's only dumped me in once. So I, I took a few people out paddleboarding with me as well with do with dogs. And um, so we hang out, we walk. I, I have gone out a couple of times with one other person who's been placed with a PTSD service dog, which is kind of nice the fact that we notoriously cancel on everybody. And, uh, and don't go out. And the cute thing about being able to go out with someone else who has a service dog is these dogs love each other. They just know when it's a pads dog, whether it's in a vest or not. And they, I'm, they play and they just have the best time. So it's, yeah, tons of support and I a new that. whole family. Yeah, I love the, the peer support as well as um, just hearing about the staff support when the dogs are sick, et cetera. So, I think that is something uh, that makes me very proud of this organization and, and ADI organizations in general is just the commitment to kind of that ongoing support that it's not just here's a dog off you go and um, that that it's a long term commitment on both sides. So, um, so Nicole, um, oh, um, Re who's asking about captioning um, for those that are tuning in. So. 
I apologize. Um, there seems to be a weird disconnect between our, because we're broadcasting on Zoom and there is closed captioning. I can see it appearing on my screen. If you're watching on Facebook, it may not be coming across. So you may have to watch from our Zoom link, which I don't know if I can help you with live right now, um, but you can sign up. I will uh, send you the link to sign up on our website so that you can tune in by Zoom moving forward so that you can get that. I'm not really sure why um, that's not coming across and I apologize. Um, Nicole's asking, what types of personality of dogs work best for a PTSD placement? Do you want to take that one, Tanya, or do you want me to? Um, all, all I can say about that is we're all quite different and PADS does an excellent job of finding the perfect match of dog to person. So for me, I got a super active dog who's super clingy. It's a weird combination and exactly sort of, of what I needed. And when you see the other clients with their dogs, it's like the dogs were made for them. Like they just managed to match and they know the dog's personality so well. And they spend so much time getting to know us and watching our triggers which I didn't know they're doing, but Margaret figured me out fairly well <laughs> with stuff. And um, before I, I got Kylo. So they, it's, it's unreal the, the behind the scenes work that PADS does to find that perfect match of dog to person. Yeah. And I think it really um, kind of to build on that a little bit is that everybody is very different. So each individual is different in terms of you know, what is comforting for one person may not be for somebody else. So we have a variety of dogs that address things in different ways. And, uh, and so what might work for one person may not for another. And so in Kylo's case, yeah, that like being in your face and super affectionate and kind of almost clingy needy might work for one person. And then for somebody else, having a dog that's quite super, super steady, solid, almost aloof, becomes a bit of an anchor, right? So when I hear people describe their different PTSD dogs, most of them are quite tactile in the sense that like they enjoy physically connecting with a person. Um, I think what distinguishes our PTSD dogs from our accredited facility dogs, for example, is that the accredited facility dogs are quite social where they don't care who they're connecting with, right? They just want to connect. And, and so for somebody that has a PTSD dog, you know, they don't want their dog necessarily going out and connecting with every person in the environment. They would like a dog that's kind of more that, you know, one man uh, kind of kind of dog or one woman kind of dog. So um, we are for sure looking for resilience though. Um, as I sit here uh, with uh, Cadence next to me, she's quite a chill girl, but when she senses any level of anxiety in me, she she kind of will spiral. Like she's just kind of like, let's just go down this path with you. And I'm like, no, no, not helping. Um, she can be quite comforting too, but I don't think she would have made a great PTSD dog because she tends to kind of feed off of uh, my feelings. Um, sometimes she's quite uh, comforting, uh, but other times I'm just like, okay, I'm already stressed. I don't need to deal with your stress too. So um, so it's interesting seeing the different kinds of dogs that we work with, uh, what makes a good fit. And that I have to give huge kudos to Margaret and her team, just really getting to know the different dogs and what works for them, what doesn't. And as you mentioned at the beginning of the interview, coming in and meeting a variety of dogs and going, well, they're lovely dogs and I love them all because they're dogs, but, but they weren't the right dog. Right. And so I think that's one of the things about our matching process is it can all look great on paper, but really at the end of the day, it comes down to, you know, is there that, that kind of magic and, and kind of click when uh, the client and dog uh, meet. And sometimes that bond is instant and sometimes it takes a little time, but uh, we work really hard to make those matches. Um, Vanessa says amazing and fascinating. I always thought very low energy dog was needed for a PTSD placement. Um, it's interesting over the years. Yeah, some of our dogs are very, for both AFD and PTSD, we've had these conversations about for a long time. Yeah, we thought low energy calm. And then in some placements, like I think about Delray, 
who works um, uh, with the Alberta, um, I'm gonna get the acronym wrong, but EMS, like the ambulance service in Alberta. And he works with first responders. That's his job as an AFD. And he is, if you watch his video, like he's famous for like his spinning out and his zooms and his little bit of crazy. And he just brings a really lovely energy to his job. Like he makes people laugh and he brings joy into the environment. So, um, and obviously having this active guy is a good fit for you. Uh, so I'm just reading through so many questions. Um, what age do pad, uh, what age is, a, sorry, I'm having trouble reading. Uh, what age is pad dog can they be placed uh, for PTSD? Uh, so I'll answer that one. So our dogs go through advanced training. Um, typically our turning age right now, especially with COVID having happened, we were bringing the age down and now it's gone back up again. The dogs don't tend to come in for advanced training until they're over two years old right now. And so then they spend, you know, uh, about nine months or so um, in advanced training on average, but that can vary widely between dogs, depending on finding a match for them, the individual dog, how they learn, et cetera. So I think the minimum for ADI is, I think the dogs have to be 18 months to be matched. I think that's their requirement. They, they have to have reached adulthood, um, but um, most of our dogs um, are, significantly older than that before they're placed. I think right now, most of our dogs are at least three before they get matched with a client and Kyla would have been, I guess, four when you got him. So um, if there's any other questions, feel free to post them in the comments and uh, or in the um, Q&A box. Uh, so Gwyneth is asking, how did the dogs transition from the puppy raiser to the candidate? Uh, so I'll speak to that. Our dogs are all raised with puppy raisers and a big part of their life is transitioning. Um, so they make a transition from a breeder caretaker home to a puppy raiser. While they're in puppy raising, we do formal puppy swaps where the dogs will go to another volunteer just to experience different things. And then of course they come into advanced training and then they work with a trainer. So you know, we choose our labs and Golden specifically because they're quite affiliative. They like to move from person, like they, they, they don't, like some dogs have a really difficult time necessarily transferring. Some of them have a harder time than others, but most um, take it all in stride. And, but it is something that we build into our program from, from the time they're puppies so that that transition is easier for them when they go into their client placement. And the other reason we do that is to see how they handle it. So we know what to expect when they go into a client placement. So some dogs, you hand them off to a new person and they appear to forget everything they have ever learned um, because the words don't sound the same coming out of somebody else's mouth. And so if we know that when we go into the client placement, it helps us kind of manage expectations and set the team up for success. So, um, and uh Lisa just commented Pads Drift, who is uh, one of uh, Cadence's puppies actually. And so she says he will need an active client for sure. So he's a busy guy, uh, but definitely that sensitive soul. So there's, uh, there's a lot of dogs kind of coming up the ranks. And I know Lisa's working with some of them that are kind of taking that career path. Is there anything else that you wanna share, um, Tanya, just about your experience or anything you think people would be curious to know or a funny story about uh, Kylo, anything like that? Yeah, I've got a few cute stories of Kylo. Um, Kylo and I, as he is a PTSD dog said, we are super attached. Um, he does love everybody and anybody, but he's always with me. And there was one day where we were waiting in line, this during COVID, waiting in line to go into an appointment outside. And there's a bunch of other people waiting in line and he ignored absolutely everybody else in the line. Anyone that walked by, he couldn't, couldn't care less. He's with me. But this one elderly gentleman walked and almost everyone looks at Kylo or talks to Kylo and I, fair enough. I, I, I used to do the same thing. Uh, but he stopped and looked at Kylo and Kylo instantly got up from his down, went over to the gentleman 
sat on his feet and leaned into him. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm really sorry. He doesn't normally move to people. He goes, oh, he goes, this is exactly what I need. He's like, my wife passed away a few weeks ago. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I'm like, this dog is something else. So Kyler just sat there, leaned up, got all the love to this guy. Like he knows, <laughs> like he just knows when people are upset or, and just need him and he will go right to them. And that is, that is just showing how that's making me tear up. I mean, it's how sweet he is. Now, a funny story with Kylo is, so we hike a lot all year long. Um, I live on the North Shore and, and we're up in the trails all the time. And we get really wet and really cold sometimes. And there's one day that we went hiking, we came back, we're freezing. So I dried him off and then I jumped in the bath because I was too cold and I needed to warm up. And he always follows me. So he, he normally lays down on the bath mat outside the bath, but instead he's sitting there looking at me staring in the bath and I'm looking at him and I see one paw come up I'm like oh don't do it you're you're a little dirty and he slowly just one leg in other leg in back legs in sat down in the bath with me and I'm like oh come on like I was cold he was cold so he was coming in to warm up too oh funny guy oh my <laughs> god well um it's interesting there's such characters and I remember seeing pictures at grad of Kylo. I think they were Dana's photos of him. Like he'd fallen asleep sitting up because he wanted to stay touching. And uh, yeah, because he's just like, I would like to touch, but also I would like to be warm. <laughs> so um, uh, Vanessa is asking how many days, weeks or months did it take, to you, take for you to feel super comfortable with Kylo? Um, well, we, we're that team that bonded instantly. Um, we were super connected. Uh, the only thing it took me about a month to trust him, um, more that he knew better than me when I wasn't doing well. And, and that's the first responder thing. I will try and push through everything. Like I will feel tension. I'm like, no, I will try to push harder off the anxiety. I'll try to fight it. And, um, he will as I said he interrupts it and at one point like I will keep trying to push and then he at one point he will just he'll lay across me and he's like I'm sorry you're not going anywhere you're too tense you're too upset you're not and it took me a long time to get used to him being the boss of me on occasion he's not but you know he knows better and it took about a month for me to listen to him and when I finally accepted that he he noticed things going wrong before I do that's when things were perfect from that moment on that's amazing well and it's just been very cool kind of hearing one how he sometimes knows that something is coming on before you even recognize it but but just that that mutual trust has, has um has built i think you know the part that i'm curious about is have you seen that translate into other relationships in your life as as you're kind of moving through some of this time with him um, I know with some of our, um, some of our clients, um, you know, they've found that there's kind of been spinoff into kind of the rest of their world after getting pad stuff. What does that look like for you? It's a huge, huge influence. Um, I, with the PTSD, it's so hard to explain it to people, but part of it was I pushed everyone away. Like I absolutely I was spiraling out of control. I was no fun to be around. So I pushed everyone away. I was in a long-term relationship before the PTSD and I pushed that away. Like I shut everything down. So it was just kind of me and my daughter and I, I wasn't dealing with anyone else because that's all I could handle. And I wasn't willing to, what I used to say is I wasn't willing to inflict myself on other people. I, I was a lot um, to handle and to deal with. But having Kylo, like, I've mellowed out a lot. Uh, I've become way more trusting of other people as well. And because my life has become much more steady, much more relaxed, I feel comfortable going out doing things for the most part. Um, I don't know whether it's the PTSD or COVID. I'm not sure which is causing me the problem right now. Um, but with that, after having Kylo for a while, I actually 
got back together with the long-term relationship that I was in. So it, it fixed that back up as well. So it, instead of me pushing everyone away, I was bringing people back into my life again. Oh, that's amazing. Good job, Tanya. <laughs> and good job, Tanya. You need to take your own credit for it too. So that is fantastic. Well, I'm looking, I just realized that time is fine and we're way over here, but if there's anything else that you want to share, we did have one question about, do they stay with a puppy raiser during advanced training? Sometimes they do on the weekends, they go back to their puppy raisers on the weekends, but often they move on to a different volunteer. We have advanced sitters that take them. So I hope that answers your question, uh, Gwyneth, but if, um, is there any last thoughts that you want to share, Tanya? I cannot thank pads enough um, for my life, essentially. I was not going to get better. There, as I said before, I had a team of people trying to put me back together. I hit the point where it, I just knew it wasn't going to happen. And then I got Kylo and it was going to happen. And that's the impression that these dogs do. Like these dogs save lives, honestly. And he, and it's a dog, <laughs> like, how about that, hey? So that's, thank you to everyone at PADS for making my world a million times better. Thank you for sharing that. Now I'm getting teary. Totally thank you for sharing with us <laughs> um, and taking the time today to kind of join us. And uh, there's lots of, you can go read the comments on Facebook, lots of thank yous coming in for sharing your story. Um, you know, I know it's, it's, it's not something that's always easy to share. And so I appreciate um, your time, but also um, your vulnerability and kind of sharing your story with a very big audience. So, um, and thank you for everybody who's tuned in with us. And uh, we will be back um, in the coming weeks. Uh, we're going into, so April is Volunteer Appreciation Month. And uh, so we're going to be doing a few little features on different volunteers within our organization. So you can meet some of the people that make dogs like Kylo happen. Um, he was raised by an amazing uh, family in the lower mainland here. And so um, we're gonna talk to some of those people in the coming weeks. And, uh, but thank you so much, uh, Tanya and Kylo, who's probably snoozing there somewhere uh, mm -hmm. for joining us. And, uh, and I'll let you go and read all of the comments. There's, there's lots too many to read, but uh, thank you everyone for, for chiming in and uh, and also, um, Kylo is on social media, correct? Um, mm -hmm. Do you want to share what his uh, page name is so that if people want to give you a follow, they can do that? You share some great content about him. Is it that's, Pads? A, that's a good question. I think it's Pad Kylo Service Dog, I think is the name of the page. If I'm Dana, I, think, I know Dana's watching. Maybe Dana can post his Dana page it, in, yeah. in, the, in the comments Dana, there. Dana's so, got it all figured out. <laughs> yeah. Um, Anyway, thank you all so much for joining us today. This has been wonderful. And uh, give that guy a big smooch for us. And uh, we look forward to reconnecting in person at some point in the future. So uh, take it easy and thanks so much. And also huge shout out to Lanny, uh, who's been typing our captions, et cetera, today. And uh, my apologies for those that can't see them on Facebook. We will try and get that result. I'm not sure why that's happening, but uh, we will... Uh, we thank Lanny for her help on the Zoom end of things. All right. Bye, everyone.